Hello, amazing students. It's your teacher, Mr. Brummond. Um, <clears throat> I am super excited to teach you geometry via YouTube today. Uh, let's jump in. So I'm in section 10.6. This is circles and arcs. Uh, the slide that I currently have up is Theorem 10-9, Circumference of a Circle. As you notice, we kind of did not have a problem today today because, well, we're jumping right in. Um, <clears throat> both of my classes have at least got to here. So if you haven't, this should be in your Theorem and Postulate Notebook, Theorem 10-9, Circumference of a Circle. And this is review. The circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. So c equals pi times d, or c equals 2 pi r, <clears throat> which we can use to solve this problem. A two foot wide circular track for a camera dolly is set up for a movie scene. The two rails of the track form concentric circles. Concentric just means one circle within another, and you can kind of see here on this. And this, they do this in movies often. The radius of the inner circle is eight feet. How much farther does a wheel on the outer track travel than a wheel on the inner rail of the track? So <clears throat> if you, you can kind of think about it, that this inside circle is smaller than the outside circle. So the wheel isn't is going to not travel as far as the wheels on the outside part. And that kind of makes sense. Um, seventh hour, you've done this problem, so just bear with me. Sixth hour, let's go ahead and solve it. So <clears throat> really, what we want to do is we want to compare the circumferences of these two circles. And they both have a circumference. The circumference of the inner circle has to deal with uh, the eight feet, whereas the circumference of the outside circle has to deal with both of these measurements put together. Well, the outside circle, the radius is larger. The radius is 2 and 8, so the radius is 10. So here, let's do the circumference of the outer circle. So outer circle. Uh, outer circle. So the circumference of the outer one is going to be 2 times pi times the radius. 2 times pi times, well, the radius isn't just 8 feet, it's 8 plus 2, so 10 feet. So I have 2 times pi times 10 feet, so that equals 25 feet. 20 pi feet. Whereas the radius on the inside, so circumference of the inner one, is using just the 8 feet. So we'll have 2 times pi times 8 feet. I am using my mouse and instead of my touch screen. Just, uh, I got a new mouse. I wanted to see if it works. It actually does pretty fine-tuned writing. Uh, so that would be, this is 20. I know it looks like 10. It's 20. <laughs> Here I am telling about how awesome the mouse is, and it doesn't do well on that. So this is 16 pi. And then it says, how much farther? Well, how much farther did the outer one travel than the inner one? Well, I just subtract the two. 20, minus six, 20 pi minus 16 pi gives me 4 pi. So let's see. I'm going to switch over to my hand. Let's see if I can type or write well. That's not that bad. The... Outer rail wheel travels four pi feet farther. There we go. That's how I got that. Uh, the formula I just used from the previous slide, uh, circumference equals two pi r. So there's that. <clears throat> Jumping into now the got it. A car has a circular turning radius of 16.1 feet. The distance between the two front tires is 4.7 feet. <clears throat> How much further does a tire on the outside of the turn travel than a tire on the inside? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a second. So go ahead and pause the video if you haven't uh, if you haven't started to pause it already. Uh, go ahead and pause it, and then when we come back, we'll solve the problem. If you would, try it, do what you can, and then we'll come back shortly. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to assume that everyone has a chance to solve it, so <clears throat> let's jump in. 
Um, how much further does the tire on the outside of the turn travel than turn the inside? I actually have given you the outside. I haven't given you the inside. So the, the circumference of the outer one is 2 pi r. But in this case, uh, I have the radius. So I've given you the radius for the outside one. It's 16.1. So 16.1 feet. So when you multiply them together, you're going to get, uh, what is that? 16.1 times 2 is 32.2 pi feet. So that's the bigger one. 32.2 point, thank you decimal, uh, feet. So, oh, pi. 32.2 pi feet. So that's the outer one. The inner one, you have to do some subtraction to find. So the inner one, you need to subtract 4.7 from 16.1. So 2 times pi times 16.1 minus 4.7 feet. <coughs> and if I do that in my head, which I can't because I just can't. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, pull out our trusty dusty calculator, or our handy dandy notebook, and 16.1 minus 4.7 should get 11.4. 11.4 pi feet. And then you subtract the two. How much further does the tire on the outside? Yep, so subtract the two. So 32.2 pi minus 11.4 pi gives you 20.8 pi. So you would say the outer tire travels 20.8 pi feet farther. <clears throat> Any questions, just note it, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Jumping now to the next slide. Arc length. The measure of an arc is in degrees, while the arc length is a fraction of the circumference. Um, let's look at this. <clears throat> theorem 10-10, arc length. This goes in your theorem and postulate notebook. Um, go ahead and take, go ahead and pause the video, take three minutes-ish, and put it in your theorem and postulate notebook. Ready, set, go. All right, I'm assuming that you have it in there. Let's talk about what this is. The length of an arc of a circle is the product of the ratio, so you measure the arc out divided by 360 and the circumference of the circle. So here we have this AB part. The length of this arc is the measure of that arc in degrees outside of 360. So it's kind of like a ratio. So like a third of the circle, a fourth of the circle, an eighth of the circle times pi times diameter. Remember your diameter. Diameter could also be, could also be 2R. I don't know why it did that. Um, and now I can't erase it. Erase. There we go. Uh, it could also be... It could also Hi, be Dad. to our... Hi, Leia. <clears throat> Daddy's teaching. Hi. Uh, well, because these are important, and Daddy really wants his students to learn. Tell me. I'm sorry, your tummy hurts. We'll talk about it here in bed, okay? Say bye, Dad. No, but you're going to leave, because I'm going to finish recording my video. Mm, bye. All right, so your diameter could be 2r as well. All right, so let's use this to solve this problem. It says, what's the length of each arc shown in gray? On your on your notes, you'll see that it's gray, and on my computer screen, you'll see that's red. That's why I said gray. Um, and then it says, leave your answers in terms of pi. <clears throat> so what I've given you uh, most of the time is is the part every you know, pretty much you have everything you need um so let's do this one first so to find out the length of arc xy we take the measurement of xy so we're going to take the measurement of xy over 360 and then times pi times pi times the diameter 
So I am doing the left one first. Um, the measure of xy is 90. So we have 90 over 360 times pi times the diameter. 90 over 360 is 1 fourth. And you can kind of see it visually it looks like 1 fourth of the circle. Times pi times 16 inches. Combine all this together. Uh, I can rearrange it. Put 16 in the front. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So it comes out to 4 pi inches. So the length of arc xy is equal to 4 pi inches. So there's my sentence. Let's do the same thing for for the other one. Um, for this one, the gray part is 240. Um, I can't just name this xy though. And notice that they threw in p here to give you as a hint. So this is actually finding the length of arc uh, xpy. So to find the length of arc xpy, we need to make this 240. So we're going to do 240 over 360. So we're finding, essentially we're finding the, the ratio of how much of this is. So 240 over 360. And then times pi, notice it's not a diameter, so it's going to be pi times 2r, because on the previous slide I said, hey, if you don't have the diameter but you have the radius, just do 2 times r. Alright, so now we can simplify this down. Uh, 240 goes into 360, uh, let's see, 2 thirds? So we're going to have 2 thirds uh, times 2 times 15 times pi, and this will be in centimeters. So then we simplify again. 2 times 2 times 15 is 60. So you have 60 divided by 3 pi centimeters. So 60 divided by 3 is 20. So 20 pi centimeters. 20 pi and centimeters. So there's that. We have now we have arc length. Next slide. It says what's the length of a semicircle with what is the arc length? Arc length. <laughs> Oops. What's the arc length of a semicircle with radius 1.3 meters? Leave your answers in terms of pi. Um, <clears throat> so go ahead and pause the video. Take a moment to do this for me, please. Thank you so much. When you get done, we'll talk about it here shortly. All right, you've had an opportunity to pause it. So let's go ahead and solve it. So I want to find the arc length of the semicircle with radius 1.3 inches. The fact that the semicircle gives away its degree value, so it's going to be 180 degrees over 360 times pi, and then it's not times diameter, this time it's radius, so 2r. So I can plug in what I know and simplify everything else. So um, this actually comes out to be a really nice answer. <laughs> Because you have 180 over 360, which reduces to 1 half, times pi, times 2, which some of you may see what's going to happen with the 2 and the 1 half, and then the radius is 1.3 meters. So this is going to simplify out, and you should end up with um, 1.3 pi meters. So then my sentence... The arc length of the semicircle is 1.3 pi meters, period. <clears throat> Done. 
and you know have some class time to finish your homework. If you would finish your homework for me, if you have any questions, put, feel free to ask me tomorrow in class or on Remind, and this will be due Wednesday. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Make good decisions. Bye.